A few weeks ago, we shared on the podcast how to have a quiet time. And during that podcast, we cautioned you on what you chose to use to guide that time. But now we want to go a little deeper into this caution. Is there a right way to have this quiet time as far as the book you choose to use? Is there a wrong way or does it really matter? So we invite you to join us in this conversation and um, just listen along as Heidi and I really just kind of process this together. Um, There is, like she said, no right or wrong answer, but we do feel like there are some guiding questions and maybe some wisdom and discernment that God has given us as we have worked through this ourselves. Welcome back to Parenting to Impress, your go-to podcast to learn practical ways to love God and love others and impress this on the hearts of your children. I am your host, Heidi Franz, and I am joined by my dear friend, Melanie Simpson, two moms who have made a lot of mistakes, but have found grace and truth along the way. So Melanie, when I realized the importance of having a daily quiet time, I was struggling to figure out what do I do during my quiet time? And so back then we had Bible bookstores and I would go to a Bible bookstore and try to figure out what am I going to use? But my husband didn't use anything in his quiet time. He strictly uses the Bible. Mm -hmm. And so I had this kind of war going on in my head going, well, should I use a guide? Should I not use a guide? What guide should I use? Did you struggle with this ever? I did. And, you know, it was one of those things where I, it got legalistic for me. And what mm. I mean about that is um, I felt like the only thing I should use is the Bible. Mm-hmm. So when I came to a passage that was frankly just hard to understand, mm-hmm. I then felt guilty if I needed to look outside of the mm-hmm. Bible to figure it out. Mm-hmm. Um, because there is a school of thought that we let the Bible translate the Bible or the Bible define the Bible. And that is 100% correct. Yeah. Um, but if you're a new Christian, just reading the Bible can be a challenge. Yes. And so I feel like there is a place for, um, I'm going to call them outside sources, outside resources, um, just kind of for this conversation. I'll talk about the Bible, and then I'll talk about outside resources to clarify. Perfect. Okay, so this goes back to our question. Those outside resources, there are probably millions available. Well, I'm sure when you went to the bookstore, you were overwhelmed. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And if you go on Amazon or you go on christianbook.com, there are a slew of options. So what we want to discuss today is how do you choose? How do you know? Yeah. You're going to have to do some research. Hopping on a website and going off of the reviews, mm-hmm. yike. That can be really scary. I would say as number one caution is, does this study lead you to know the Bible better mm-hmm. or the author's thoughts mm-hmm. better? Mm-hmm. And what we what we mean by that is the author can have an opinion for sure, but that opinion, if it is truly pointing you back to God, is going to be a clarifying opinion about Scripture. It's going to help you understand mm-hmm. Scripture. And then on top of that, like Heidi said, is this about the author? <laughs> is the author promoting him or herself, or are they promoting God? And I would also add, are they promoting a thought? Mm. So let's talk about these popular self-help books. Um, We don't need to mention any names. There are a bunch of them out there that are very popular. Mm -hmm. You see them on social media. People will talk about them. Are those bad? Like, am I not as spiritual if I read them? What, What are your thoughts on that, Mel? Um, I, I like self-help books. I like reading about habits. I'm really interested in that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, but I don't use those in my quiet time with God. My time with the Lord is about me and God. I want to know more about Him. I want to know what His Word says. Mm-hmm. I can read about habit building at another time, but that time with God is between me and God. I think that's a really good point. When you're reading a self-help book, some of them have a lot of scripture in them, but typically what they have is a verse thrown in here and there. Right. And it's a and it's a verse to support what they've said instead of them using the verse and then explaining it. Right. And so that's always kind of a guide that I use when I am looking at a book. Is it helping me learn the Bible or is it helping me learn a 
thought or a process or a topic even because exactly. I mean we did talk about doing a topical study in your quiet time mm -hmm. but I think the issue is that when you said it when it's pulled out of context mm -hmm. that's I think that becomes kind of a slippery slope because mm -hmm. it is very easy to use scripture manipulatively to drive mm -hmm. a topic mm -hmm. versus seeing something that God is talking about sin sin is a topic Right. It's all through scripture. There right. are loads of passages about sin. So I'm not saying you can't study a topic, but I will look at passages of scripture that talk about sin. I'm not going to pull out, like you said, a verse or two to talk about a topic. Well, and I think we need to read the Bible as a letter, as a book to us. And I would never read a letter from a friend and pull out one sentence mm -hmm. and go, oh, well, that's what they mean. Mm -hmm. And that's how they're feeling. But yet we do that with God all the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. Okay. So number one, make sure that this book is helping us learn the Bible, helping us know God better mm -hmm. and to understand what God has told us. Mm -hmm. Number two. I feel like it piggybacks off number one is the focus on um, self-improvement, self-actualization, mm. all those self-words. Mm -hmm. um, the only self-words that God talks about are self-righteousness and mm. selfishness. Mm. And those are both used in conviction of a, um, of a mind and a heart that is driven by a desire to please self, to glorify mm -hmm. self. So it's not a positive thing. Mm -hmm. So if you have a resource that is um, building you up outside of your relationship with Christ, mm -hmm. that's a problem. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you are coming up with 10 tips on how to be a better person, how to be nicer to your family, how to not be angry, how to the list goes on, then that would be a caution of this is about me and how I can help myself by implementing a few of these little tips. Right. And again, there's nothing wrong with those, but they should not be included in our perspective during a quiet time with God, when you, the purpose of a quiet time is to spend time with the Lord to get to know Him as He speaks of Himself in His Holy Word, because it is transformative of the mm -hmm. believer who is encountering Him in the pages of the Bible, right? So those other resources that bring those topics in, that's a distraction. Yes. That, yeah. is, not, that is not a help. It is a distraction. So I think that's, that's the danger there. Okay, so I am a Christian who has decided that I need a quiet time. I need time with God. I need to know Him. I need to be able to listen to what He's saying. So I go to Amazon and I'm totally overwhelmed. Are there other options than just having a devotion guide? Is there something else that you can do? I think my my best advice is if you are um, you know wanting to study the scripture as it is, there is a very simple way we call it read, reflect, respond. So you are looking at the facts of a passage. You want to know what what's going on, who is it about, what what's going on in the context of the passage. Then just take some time to pray about it and ask God, ask the Holy Spirit, help me to understand this passage, help me to understand more about you. And then you respond in prayer. Again, we talked about this in the quiet time. You can write a prayer. You can just pray a prayer. Um, and then in that study itself, you may come up with, hey, this is a word I'd like to learn more about. And I know you enjoy mm -hmm. kind of delving into that a little bit more too. What do you do? Yeah. So what I will do is I will read over a passage, whether that's one verse, whether that's five verses, if I'm working through a book of the Bible. And I will really focus on the keywords. So let's take Psalm 23 as an example, because that's the one that I'm working on currently. So the Lord is my shepherd. And then I look at that and go, okay, what does the Lord mean? What does shepherd mean? And sometimes I'll look at several different translations to see how have they translated. Now, I have to be careful to make sure I'm using a reputable translation. And sometimes I'll also pull in a commentary, again, making sure it's a Bible-based commentary. But going through each one of those words, I've also do something what I call draw deep, D-R-A-W, where I will draw the keywords and verses. And that forces me to think about 
well, what would that look like if I drew that word? And so as a shepherd, I would draw with a staff. I would draw with the sheep. And I would, and typically I'd draw a little stick figure. It's nothing fancy, but it forces my brain to think about what am I reading mm-hmm. in each one of those verses. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, you know, it's funny because just personality wise, that would be a distraction to me to okay. try to draw something. But I love studying words. Uh-huh. Um, and so Blue Letter Bible has a great resource. Mm-hmm. You can just click on the word. You can see the Greek. You can see the Hebrew. Mm-hmm. Um, and just looking at the roots and how that word is used in context. Um, I can rabbit hole that all day mm-hmm. long. But it does... It slows the pace. And I think that's really what both of these things do. It just slows us down. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, when we have a still spirit before the Lord, it opens us up to hear from him and to hear what he wants to tell us about himself. Key word here. It's about him. Exactly. Anything that I learn about myself is a byproduct. And it is about the transformative work that he's doing in me that then I would take out, we call it application, right? Mm -hmm. So if God is teaching me about his holiness, well, what does that holiness mean to me as I live out my life as a Mm -hmm. believer? Right. It's not me coming, okay, God, what do you, what do you want to tell me about me today? Hmm. And so I think really at the root, that's the, the overarching caution here in bringing any outside resources. It's so easy to slip into that, to that mindset. Mm Mm-hmm. I love what you just said there in that I realize the issues in my life as I learn about God. It's not that I am going in trying to fix my issues. When I see God's holiness and I realize how little I stack up, when I see God's forgiveness and I realize how little I forgive others, that's when I realize, hmm. God, Mm -hmm. I need your Mm -hmm. Holy Spirit to come in. I need the Holy Spirit to come in and transform me. And it drives us back to the foot of the cross. When we realize how little we have to offer, really we have nothing to offer, Mm -hmm. and that Jesus paid that price for us. He is our substitutionary sacrifice on the cross so that we can be in the presence of God. Mm -hmm. I mean, I wish you could see our faces right now because we're both smiling, like just the joy (laughs) that that brings, knowing that... I can do nothing to earn this. Mm-hmm. It's all God. Yeah. And that's, and Very again, true. circling back to the books. I mean, when you are picking up a resource, is it trying to say, you can do this? You got this? Right. You you can do the work of the cross. That's a problem. Yeah. So good. Okay. So let's say you do choose a book to guide your time. One of the questions that I would ask is, is that book going to help you understand the Bible better? Okay. And so let's say, let's choose the book of James. Okay. The book of James is a very toe stomping book. I mean, you cannot read that and truly reflect on it without going, oh, I got a lot of sin going on. (laughs) I need a lot of Jesus to help me on this. Okay, so you pick up this book and they have a section for you to read. They explain the different things. But I know for me, I found a lot of times what they have is day one, I can't finish in one day. Is that bad? Is that good? I, you know what? It's fine. You, nobody is telling you, is sitting there next to you on the couch saying, if you don't finish this passage this morning, you have failed at your quiet time. Yes. I mean, if it takes you all week to get through day one, who cares? Exactly. And I think that's a key point that day one is the author's guide to an accountability. Right. When it becomes something that you look at it as a beginning and an end and that must be finished, that's legalism. Yeah. Yeah. And so if you get stuck and you start wanting and you're, you're doing a word study on something or you're, or you take a rabbit trail, maybe that's what God's wanting you to do. Mm-hmm. It's the same thing. I don't know if this has happened to you, Heidi, but um, I, every summer I download a read the Bible through the summer plan. Oh, okay. You know, because I'm not doing a Bible study. I have, right. you know, just a freer time for my quiet time and it never fails. Um, about six weeks in, Mm -hmm. I falter (laughs) and then I start panicking. How am I going to get it all done in the summer? Uh Should I double up? Should I read it at breakfast, lunch, and dinner? Should I read it at bedtime? And more often than not, I'll fret for about 48 hours. And then the Lord is like, Hey, just keep showing up. 
Mm -hmm. Just keep showing up. It doesn't matter if you fall behind. It doesn't matter if you're not on the same box as the rest of the group, whatever. Just keep showing up. Yeah. That reminds me of a situation when I was in middle school. My pastor and his wife encouraged all of us to read through the New Testament. And so we they broke it down for us so we could easily get through it in the time period that we needed. And I remember I finished early. Kudos to me, right? She says more about my I was personality. Say, if you knew, I was say, if you knew anything about <laughs> Heidi, you'd be like, not surprised. Yeah, not surprised. And I remember telling my pastor's wife that I finished early. And she's like, oh, why'd you finish early? And I said, I swear not. I just wanted to get it done. Oh. Mm-hmm. And boy, I, I the look on her face, mm-hmm. she hit it pretty well. But I'm sure that she also felt inside just this sigh of mm-hmm. she's missed the point. Mm-hmm. And I had. Well, I was going to say, it's the same probably, you know, words that you would share with a younger Christian now on this mm-hmm. side of, you know, I'm not going to say how old you are, but this, this age <laughs> talking to your younger self, like, mm-hmm. oh, sweet girl, it's not a race. No. It's not a competition. It's not a check mark. Mm-hmm. It's not a whoop done with that. Mm-hmm. I can move on and do other things. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because like we talked about in the quiet time, this is not a guarantee that the rest of your day is going to go swell. Right. Yeah. Right. This is a desire to grow, to listen, to quiet our spirits, to be with God. Yeah. yeah. One of the verses that um, for me helps to kind of crystallize what Heidi and I have been talking about is from Romans 12, verse 2. Let me read it first, and then I'll kind of explain why, why what my thought process is. Okay. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. So let's go back to the do not conform to the pattern of this world. We know as believers that we are called to live differently. When you have Christ in you and he is calling you through his will to be sanctified, to be changed, to be transformed, um, it's going to look different than how the world lives because the world lives to please self. Mm Mm-hmm. Well, how does this happen? How do we know how to live? It's when we read our Bibles. That's where the transforming and the renewing of our mind occurs because we get to know the God we love and serve, mm-hmm. and we get to understand his will for our lives, which is to be sanctified. That means to be changed and made more like Christ. And then when that is happening, that's when we can kind of hold it up against what the world is telling us how we should be. Now we go, oh, okay, I see it now. I see why living this way is not God's best. It's not what God wants for me. And we understand then that pleasing God becomes our primary goal. Mm -hmm. That's, I mean, that's really it. And so I feel like that verse really helps me to, to understand if I pick something up at Target, I think it might be helpful for quiet time. And I'm looking at it and I'm thinking, okay, is this, like we talked about, sending me back to the authoritative word of God? Okay, it is. Great. Okay. Now, is this just about how to make me a better person? Oh, yeah. Okay. This is about how I can set healthy boundaries. Nothing wrong with healthy boundaries. Absolutely. But it's not because the boundary comes from what God's best is for me, God's will for my life. Mm -hmm. It's because I don't want to do that. Mm-hmm. you know, or whatever the reason is. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, that makes perfect sense. And I think just kind of to pull this all together, we are not saying self-help books are bad, right? We're not saying devotionals that are Bible-based are bad. Right. I have used a plethora mm-hmm. of Bible devotions and I can say because of these quality ones that I have learned how to read the Bible on my own better. I've learned how to dig into the scriptures and so I'm very very thankful for that. But what we are cautioning you is to make sure what you are using to help you learn the Bible is actually helping you learn the Bible. That's what we're cautioning yep. you. That's the bottom line right there. And to have that time that you set aside to quiet your spirit, to hear what God has to say to you in his word and in prayer. 
We're not saying that you don't listen to podcasts or praise music. I do both. I actually typically, when I'm getting ready in the mornings, I'll have a podcast going, um, a sermon. I will have praise music going as I'm working or as I am in the car. All of those things are helping me keep my mind focused and growing, but they're not my personal time with God. And that's what we're encouraging you to separate. So in closing, if you are looking for something to help guide your time um, as you spend time with the Lord and reading his word, I would just remind you Heidi has some fantastic resources available on the Parenting to Impress blog. And we'll add those links in the show notes as well. And remember that Melanie and I are always available to encourage you to help you dig deeper because it's our desire for you to grow spiritually. And we can be reached on the Parenting to Impress private Facebook group or also on the blog. So as we leave, we pray that this has encouraged you to dive deeper into what God has to say to you today. We want to thank you for listening to the Parenting to Impress podcast. Be sure to visit abcjesuslesbian.com and check out the show notes for more information on topics shared in this episode. Please subscribe and share with your friends.